the laws of thermodynamics. What on earth do these have to do with the economy? A lot more than you might think, and in this lecture we're going to find out. But first, we need to talk about systems. There are three types of system that I want to discuss. Open systems, closed systems, and isolated systems. In an open system, both energy and matter can flow in and out of the system. Human beings and other biological organisms are examples of open systems. We rely on a constant stream of materials from the environment, such as food, oxygen, and water, and we produce waste, which goes back to the environment. In a closed system, energy can still flow in and out, but matter cannot. The system is closed to materials. Planet Earth is essentially a closed system. We receive a tremendous amount of energy from the sun, and a lot of heat is radiated back into space. However, aside from the odd meteorite coming in, and the odd spaceship going out, Earth exchanges very little material with the rest of the solar system. Last up, an isolated system. Neither matter nor energy can enter or leave, and it's much harder to think of an example of a true isolated system, maybe the universe as a whole. So, what kind of system is the economy? Although the neoclassical circular flow diagram treats the economy like an isolated system, it is, in fact, an open system. The economy exchanges matter and energy with the closed system that contains it, i.e. the biosphere. Okay, so now that we've covered systems, we can get into the laws of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics tells us that energy is always conserved. It cannot be created or destroyed. And the same applies for matter, due to the law of conservation of mass. Everything comes from somewhere, and everything has to go somewhere. In the context of the national economy, any materials that we extract from the environment or import from other countries either have to accumulate as stocks of physical goods, such as built capital, or leave the national economy, either as exported goods to other countries or as wastes that go back to the environment. This picture shows the basic mass balance principle. Material into the economy equals material out plus net accumulation. And while materials may accumulate in some forms of built capital for many years, like in old buildings, all raw materials eventually become wastes again. So the first law is relatively straightforward. The second is the trickier one. The second law is the entropy law. It tells us that in an isolated system, entropy will inevitably increase over time. Okay, so what is entropy? Essentially, it's a measure of the amount of energy that is unavailable, or no longer available, to do work. Or, in another sense, it's a measure of disorder or randomness. The first law tells us that energy is always conserved, but the second law tells us that its quality to do anything useful tends to decrease. But that's in an isolated system, which is very important to remember. In an open or closed system, additional high-quality energy can come in, and this energy can reduce entropy within the system. But it does so at the expense of an increase in entropy somewhere else, outside of the system. It's a bit like Oscar Wilde's book, The Picture of Dorian Gray. In order for Dorian to stay young, he sells his soul so that a portrait, rather than he himself, is the thing that ages and fades. The second law is the reason that your bedroom will never spontaneously tidy itself. Without external energy, things gradually descend into chaos. So. What does the second law imply for the economy? It tells us that although materials can be recycled, they can never be recycled 100% because this would require too much energy. Think about your shoes. As you walk around town, the rubber on the soles is slowly worn away. It would take an awful lot of energy to find and recycle 100% of this original material. And while materials can be recycled to a large degree, the second law tells us that energy cannot be recycled at all. While the quantity of energy is conserved in any process, that's the first law again, its quality, i.e. its availability to do work, decreases. 
all physical processes convert low entropy energy and materials into high entropy wastes. Moreover, the structure of any physical good degrades over time and energy inputs are needed to counteract this. But like in the picture of Dorian Gray, a decrease in entropy in one place means a large increase somewhere else. One question that sometimes comes up is, does life on Earth violate the second law? How does all the wonderful complexity and order in the biosphere emerge if the second law tells us that everything becomes more disordered and chaotic over time? Well, the answer lies in system boundaries. The Earth is a closed system, not an isolated system, and we are continuously bathed in low entropy sunlight that allows for the complexity and order of life to emerge and increase. But this low entropy on Earth inevitably comes at the cost of higher entropy in the Sun, and the Sun will eventually burn itself out, but fortunately not for another five billion years, so don't panic quite yet. Every living thing on our planet is an open system, capable of absorbing and emitting both matter and energy. A biological or ecological system is capable of maintaining its low entropy only by drawing on even greater amounts of low entropy from the system in which it exists and returning high entropy waste back into that system. Living organisms are what we call dissipative structures and the economy is a dissipative structure too. So what's the take-home message here? The economy is a system that transforms low entropy raw materials into high entropy wastes. But it doesn't do this for nothing. We created the economy to satisfy human needs and wants. And the order in the economic system and its ability to satisfy our needs and wants can only be maintained by a steady stream of low entropy materials and energy. All economic production is ultimately based on the resources provided by nature. And whatever we produce must eventually decay, fall apart, or dissipate returning back to nature.